All right, this is 8.4b, and uh, if you remember, we were doing uh, translating temperatures back and forth from the metric to the U.S., uh, Celsius, and uh, Fahrenheit. That being the case, let's, uh, let's look at example 6. And we're transferring 120 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, we used the bottom one because the Fahrenheit is the one we don't know. Let me write the formula up here. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to put the number we do know in for what they're saying it represents. In this case, C for Celsius. Notice I put a parenthesis around that. You always do that. Just make sure that everything... Um, stays where it's supposed to. Now what do I do? I multiply these two together. When I multiply those two together I get F equals numerator times 120 divided by 5 so it gives me 216. That's old stuff when you have a fraction times a whole number. The top number is multiplied by the whole number divide by 5, 216, and then it says add 32. So 120 degrees Celsius is 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Now just kind of give you an idea of how hot 248 degrees Fahrenheit is. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's hotter than uh, boiling water there. So pretty scalding. On the other hand, example 7 says you've got the flu and he has a fever of 102 degrees Fahrenheit. We're looking for Celsius, so we're going to use the top equation since that's what we're looking for. And it's 5 times F minus 32 divided by 9. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to put, instead of the F, we're going to put um, 102 in there. Let me just put that in there, a different color, and we're going to solve it. Remember PEMDAS, we're going to do what's in the parentheses first, 102 minus 32 is going to give us 70, and we're going to leave everything as is, keep going, we do our multiplication on the top here, 350 divided by 9, and we have a temperature then when we do our division of 38.9 degrees Celsius. If you look on page number, uh, where is it, page 597, bottom of the page, kind of gives you a little bit of uh, temperature and what happens. So for instance, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and at zero Celsius. Room temperature 68 degrees, Celsius is around 20. So it gives you uh, some different conversions there as far as Celsius and Fahrenheit back and forth. Problem set 8.4 on page 599. Let's just do a couple of these. They are changing. Um, now let's look at number 18. We're changing gallons to liters. And what they're saying here is that we have 15 gallons and we're going to change that to liters. So line, or times a line, we put gallons on the bottom. Do we know anything from the table on page 595 about gallons and liters? Well, that's a volume. Gallons and liters. Sure enough, last one. It says for one gallon we have 3.79 liters. Cancel our gallons over 1. We multiply our 15 times 3.79 and we end up with, uh, let's see, we're going from gallons to liters. I'm trying to figure, find out which problem I was doing. Okay, 18. Multiply 15 times 3.79 and I get 56.85 liters. So make sure you make good use of that table on 595, and uh, you should do just fine and dandy with uh, conversion from metric to English and English to metric. 
Let's see if there's anything else. Now, let's just do a couple more problems here. Let's look at 21. We're going from kilograms to pounds. And they're telling me that we have 15 kilograms. Again, times, line, kilograms on the bottom. Go back a couple pages to 595. Kilograms is a weight in pounds. So let's see what we have as far as kilograms to pounds. Last one. 2.2 pounds is 1 kilogram. Cancel our kilograms. Multiply 15 times 2.2. And we end up getting the right number there, which is going to be 33 pounds when we multiply 15 times 2.2. See if we have any other ones here that we can do. Um, let's see, volume. Let's do uh, 14. We're going from cubic inches to liters. We go cubic inches to liters, and we're given 400. All right, notice um, I have cubic inches having to do with volume, but let's look back on page 595 and see if it says anything as far as volume. If it has anything with cubic inches in it, we don't have to do the times line, times line, times line three times. So we can just use the conversion they give us if they do. So let's see, page 595. Ah, volume. It says there are 16.39 milliliters in one, in, in one cubic inch. Well, what that does it doesn't give us our liters, but it switches us into metric. And because it switches us into metric, now everything from here on is going to be metric, which is nice to get that conversion out of the way right away. So we converted it to metric. Now we can look and say, do we know anything about milliliters and liters? Well, according to one of the previous lessons in the table, we knew that there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. And sure enough, that's what we're looking for. We can cancel these. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 400 times 16.39 times 1 over 1,000. So 400 times 16.39 is... 6556 divided by a thousand and that ends up giving me 6.556 liters for an answer there. So that would be how you do number 14. Alright, so I'm going to let you loose on your own to finish up. Uh, the problems on 8.4 and we'll be ready for 8.5.